Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. In today's video, I'll show you the breakdown of how I worked on this animation and the full process behind it. You can get this project file and many other ones for free with our Motion Insider membership at Motion Circles. We also have amazing high quality project files from top industry professionals. Not only that, members will get access to all of our beginner motion design courses, trusted by 50,000 plus students worldwide. Learn from the masters and become a professional. Visit motioncircles.com for more details. First, let's create a composition 1080 by 1080. Click on OK. The first layer we have is the background. We have a gradient ramp going from a black to a darker blue color. That's our background. And then we have a flower pod layer. Within the composition, you can see here, we have a middle section of the pod and then it's staying static with the gradient color applied. And then we have a top and bottom animated with scale property. So we have the shape just becoming bigger and smaller. And then we duplicated the top and bottom again to form a loop like this. And this is the animation we have for the flower pots. Let's go back to our main composition. And then for the actual animation, we are using a Y position animation, have the pot going down here and then going up again. And while it's going down, we have a rotation property animating as well. So we have a slight rotation when it goes down and then goes up. And then we also need to add a time remap. So we're gonna right click, go to time, enable time remapping. And then for the time remapping, I need to only use the section where if I click inside, I'm gonna use the section where the pot is at one second in between these two copies. I'm gonna stay there and then I need to add a time remapping here so that I only want to use the first section where this one opens up and then I'm going to copy the first keyframe and paste it to the last keyframe here so that we're only utilizing the first section of the pot going when the pot is going down everything is opening up and then when it goes back up everything is closing down while this inside animation is a loop we're only going to use the first second inside this composition so that's why we're using a time remap effect. We're only cutting it at one second here to move one second to align with my keyframe over here. And then I'm gonna paste in the beginning keyframe over here at, at the back. So we have a looping of the first second while this pod is turning into like a 3D shape. So that's what I wanna use. And then I'm gonna just copy the easing from my Y position, copy it, and then paste it onto my time remapping. And then I could delete the original time remapping at the back. So this is gonna be what it looks like in terms of the final animation of the pod. And then we added some effects. We added noise with 20% of noise and you can see the before after. It gives a bit more texture. And then we're gonna add a CC light sweep effects to add some highlights around the edges of my pod. So for the light sweep effect, we're gonna change the width to 100 and then I'm gonna change the sweep intensity to zero, change the edge intensity to 450 so that you can see we have an edge just highlighted around this pod here, which is looking pretty cool. That's what I want. And that finish up the stylization for my flower pot. And this is the final for the flower pot. Looking pretty cool. And then we're gonna add a gradient in the background. Uh, we're gonna create a gradient composition. And for the gradient color, first we have a blue color with some mask going on, and then we have some feather on the mask. So we have this blue gradient on the corner, and we use the same thing for the purple, and then we added the mask and the feather. And for the orange, we added the mask and the feather. And then for this pink again, we add a little blue in the corner. And then for the top effects, we use CC star burst to create some stars that's not animating. It's actually static in the background to add a little bit of texture on the backgrounds. And this is gonna be my colored section. Let me go back again. I can fill in with the colored. And then for the color, I'm animating using a mask path. So basically when the pot is going down, we have this mask that's showing here. 
to reveal this section of the grading color. And then when the pot is going up, we're going to move the pattern out of the way. And that's what we have. And then in terms of the pattern, we also add a edge glow effect here. If I turn off the fast box blur, you can see it's basically a white color solid layer with a mask on it. And then we change the opacity to around 50%. And then we added some fast box blur. So it's blurring out. It's very soft glow around the edges to add some depth around the edges, or you can say to add some highlights. And then for the pot that's being affected by this grading color, we actually create a duplicate of the pot, and then uh, we have the noise and the light sweep again. But then for this part, we also added the hue and saturation to make it more of a pink and white color. And then we also added a curve to make the highlight part even brighter so that we have this color modification changes when this pot is highlighted by this glow or by this grading background, almost like the light that's shining through across the pot when it's coming in. So that's the effect we want to create, just like a light source that's showing on top of the flower pot. And then the next thing we have is just a stem that's pretty simple and straightforward. We have some path animation when the flower pot comes in. It's move a little bit to add some lifelike movement, just slight movement on the stem. And then for the shadow, we have another copy here. So this is actually the stem, and then we have the shadow here that's casting on the stem to give it more of a realistic feeling with the shadow. And then the shadow itself just with the fill color effect and some modification of the opacity with 47% opacity, casting a shadow on top of my pod. And then we're going to have our flower here. So for each shape of the flower, we have a grading color. For this part, we didn't have the grading color, but we have a light sweep similar to the light sweep that goes around the pod. We have the light sweep on all these different flowers here. And for the flower, we don't have much other effects other than just a fill color with the grade info color. And then you can see here we have a very subtle fill from a darker red to a red color and then we added a cc light sweep effect to add some highlight around the edges and also we have a noise effect to add some texture so that's what happens with my all these different flowers after we have the flower we use a null to control the flower and then we animate the rotation and the position together with the pod so this flower is going down with this flower pod together in terms of animation. So let's see what's happening here. That's so far what we have. Before we continue, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We will publish new content every week. Click the subscribe button to level up your animation skills and get inspired with great animation every week. You can also join our exclusive community to hang out with motion designers to grow together. Check the link in the description below. That's looking pretty cool. You can see especially when you see the CC light sweep that's giving a highlight around the edges of my flower. That's pretty cool. And then the next thing, we're going to have a glow over here on the side of the background. That's pretty cool. Just a soft glow here. And then we added a disc that's coming up. And in order to add a disc, we need to make sure for our 3D render, we're using a Cinema 4D render. And then for the disc shape, it's actually controlled by just after we turn on the Cinema 4D render, we're going to have a geometry option. And then for the geometry option, we turn on the extrusion depth to 10 so that we're able to make this disk thicker using this extrusion depth, but now we're keeping it 10. And then in terms of color, we're actually can going down the content, we're adding a side color going to site and color, and then we added a site color in this darker blue color so that you can see the disc is in white on top and bottom, but then in darker blue on the side. So that's how we created the disc. And then at the same time, we're animating the rotation a little bit and disc just going up, being thrown up. And then we want to cast a shadow from the pod onto the disc. So we create a duplicate of my uh, pod here, composition. And then what we are using is we're using a CC slant effect if we don't have a slant. If I just turn off my mat here, and then if I, this is actually just a duplicate of my pot. And then if I turn on the CC slant, you can see 
I'm modifying the slant here and then we can modify the height here. So we're casting a shadow and the shadow is black because we use the fill that's black. But if I turn the things off, you can see this is actually a copy of my pot here. So we're using a CC slant effect to flip it and then we fill it in black and then we put it a noise effect and then we change, we add a fast box blur to make it a little blurry as a shadow. And then we use a disc as an alpha mat for my casting here. I also need to turn the eye icon on with my disc. So I want to show my disc as well. So you can see the shadow here. It's been casted onto my disc to create the 3D effects. And then we're going to use a adjustment layer. For the adjustment layer, we're just adding a curve here to make the highlight brighter to turn up the contrast of the entire scene. So if I just turn my adjustment layer on, this is the difference it's making. You can see the color is brighter and the contrast is better. That's what I like. And then the last thing we use is a blur map. If I just go open this blur map here, you can see I drew the three different shapes that's covering a part of the artwork. And then these are all just different shapes. And then we create an adjustment layer, putting in a compound blur effect. And then we're using layer two blur map as the source of my blur layer. So what's happening is we're turning the blur to 10 here. And then what's actually happening is if I turn on the blur, a uh, compound blur adjustment layer is that when the artwork is reaching any section that's being affected by this blur map, it's going to become a little blurry. So you can see this part here is underneath the blur map. So this part is becoming a little bit blurry. So I have my blur map around here and here. You can see anywhere that's being covered by the blur map is going to get blurry. So that's how we create some depths or maybe like some camera lens effects with this animation. So it's not so flat. And after we have all these layers, this is the final animation. There you have it. This is our final animation with all the layers together. That's it with this video. Hope you like it and learned a couple of tips and tricks for your next project. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to check out our project file shop for many amazing After Effects project files to improve your skills. If you're serious about improving your animation skills and become a professional, check out our Motion Insider membership at motioncircles.com to access our beginner animation courses trusted by 50,000 plus students worldwide. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.